welcome back. It's a Money Monday edition of Liquid Lunch on Newsmax TV. I'm John Tobacco. We're coming to you today as we do every day, noon to 2 Eastern. We're live in your living room, and we're also live on Broadway today in downtown Manhattan. Uh, a little bit, hold on, is my mic not working? Yeah, there you go. We're in the uh, Question Tequila Studios in downtown Manhattan, and joining us today is uh, one of our favorite contributors. She's our uh, Gen Z specialist, and uh, let me just tell you this. If God had a podcast, it would be Pavlina's podcast. She's the host of uh, the If God Had a Podcast podcast and uh, producer for uh, Salem Radio and uh, many things, a social media superstar. Um, but I guess last time, you know, I mentioned on the show before that you keep us in touch with the younger people. And it seems that when it comes to politics, uh, your generation is pretty liberal. Yeah, so it's crazy. So I'm a Generation Z, um, and Generation Zs are 7 to 22-year-olds. And the, you know, an article came out recently that they are just as uh, liberal as millennials, which is, which is really interesting. They uh, tend to have, um, they're more empathetic with things. They want the LGBTQ community to be accepted. They are um, very into mental health. And so I think what it is is they're just they just care more about the social issues rather than the economical financial issues. Well, you know? So, uh, Pavlina, the only reasons that it really makes sense to be conservative is if you're concerned about preserving traditional values and or if you're concerned about keeping more of your own money. Now, Generation Zs, especially the younger end of the seven to twenty-two year old yep. age bracket. They don't have any money, so why would they care? You know, if the government taxed had a ninety percent tax rate and uh, redistributed everything. Uh, in terms of traditional values, I think we've seen things shift so much, even just the last twenty years, on issues like gay marriage and right. uh, gender equality, transgender issues. So, I, I'm wondering is how much of this is. Generation Z is a liberal generation, and millennials are a liberal generation, and how much of this is Gen Zs and millennials just not having any money, so they don't care what the tax rate is? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I think a lot of it has to do with exactly what you were saying, um, just the fact that they don't have any money, and they, care, they just care about uh, things like climate change. They're learning that kind of stuff in school. A lot of schools have you know, more liberal educations, and that's what they're hearing, and that's what's freaking them out, and like, that's the stuff they care about. They're more activists than anything else. So, so um, the, the Gen Xers and the baby boomers and the, the greatest generation, they tend to skew a bit more conservative. I'm wondering, as the millennials age and as the Gen Zers age, will they grow into conservatives? I think Churchill used to say, if you're not liberal at 20, you have no heart. If you're not conservative at 40, you have no brain. Yes. Will these Gen Zers grow into conservatives? I think they will. Um, but the thing with, and you were kind of saying this with uh, just conservative in general, is they uh, tend to have like you know more traditional values. And Christianity is sort of dying off, at least like in Europe, a lot of you know, Christianity is dying off, so it's kind of hard to see and you know see where that's going to go. But that that tends to be the way it goes. You John, know? are your kids millennials or Gen Zers? Um, I would say all my kids are Gen Zers. Uh, John is thirteen, Ava is seventeen, go. Tori's twenty. Oh so yeah, that's all, all Gen like Z. The, yeah. Uh, so do they have Z. firmly defined political views at this point? You know, um, I don't think my son cares a hoot. Um, other than he probably agrees with me on my Trump stuff because he just knows better than to disagree with me. <laughs> um, and I, I think my daughters, um, I've been taking them to the polls since they were little kids, like letting them come and join me that's and awesome. understand the process. And um, I think they understand the reasons why I care about Trump. And they have those same feelings that a lot of women do. They like the security of it, even though he doesn't seem like the morally greatest character. It gives people this feeling of security that he cares about the country. I think that's how my daughters are. Right. But yeah, they're all for free everything. I can yeah, tell you that. that's I so think that's quite another thing. Too. So, yeah. Pavlina, is something that we're seeing not just in New York, but in cities around the country, actually right. cities around the world is the battle of how to handle and how to regulate Uber. Now, yes. here in New York City, Uber and other e-hail apps like Lyft, they're not at all happy with what New York City's done to regulate them. So they're now suing New York yeah. City. What is this all about? What are they doing exactly? So 
The reason Uber is suing New York City is because drivers are taking up space. They are, it's called um, the vehicle cap, basically. And it's, just the, it's the time that Ubers are, and Lyfts are driving around the city with no passengers. And uh, New York City wanted to put a cap on, on that amount of time, but that's like the whole thing with Uber. You know what I mean? It's the convenience. It's like, oh, I'm in the middle of you know the city and I need to find an Uber and this one's two minutes away. Like That's the convenience of it. And getting rid of that can really lose a lot of that convenience. Um, so I personally think that New York City should just stay out of it and let Uber do what Uber wants to do. Well, um, but it's the second time they're being sued. So. You know about this guy, right? Yes. You know about this guy. Our Bill favorite, our favorite he's mayor. Been this yes. He's been found. you got to take him he's off been the milk container. We may have oh my to take gosh. him off the milk container. <laughs> um, but, you know, there's a long story history of him being in bed with the Taxi and Limousine Commission. Right. And... Um, He's done all kinds of things to make sure that Uber can't get a full foothold in here, mainly yeah. by using taxes and stuff. Um, but I will say this. Leave it to government to figure out a way where yeah. um, you can ride in a stinky, smelly yellow cab that's broken and all parts are rattling right. around on oh it. <laughs> or you can drive in a nicer car mm -hmm. um, for a cheaper price. Yep. And the government doesn't want us to have those simple yeah, amenities, exactly. like uh, convenience and cleanliness and And there were never enough taxis around. Like, I feel like I had such a hard time, like before Uber, because I was always in New York, like I would have such a hard time finding an open cab. No so and that's when Uber came in. They were like, okay, like convenience. And then you have these guys, we have no idea where they're from, okay? Um, <laughs> but they can decide if they want to take you. Where you going? Yeah. Like you know, yeah, I, they're I, not supposed to do. You're that. going to Staten Island? No, no, I don't want to go to Staten Island. No, I don't, well, you're I'm, right I'm about heading that. Midtown. That's I want to go. Da I don't want to go downtown. Uber, you get there, the guy clicks you up. That's he picks true. you up. He doesn't find out where you're going until you get in and start paying. So, yeah. exactly. well, that's true. They're not supposed to do that. That's okay. right. And uh, Pavlina, thank you again. Yes, thank you dear. so much. You're the best. We give you uh, all age ranges, and uh, when it comes to disease. Pavlina knows best. You stay right there. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back right after this.